Bruh. Look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. F <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Top of his head. <laughs> Look at his lips. <laughs> okay, so funny story is I've already recorded this entirely once before, and I just found out that my microphone wasn't on the entire time when I went to go edit it. But over the course of the year of 2016, I made a lot of videos of my brand new adventure and exploration of sneakers. And for me personally, Adidas just absolutely dominated like the product line for the entire year. And the designs of their shoes have just been incredible. So anytime I wanted to spend money on shoes, I always ended up back in the same place. It's either Ultra Boost, NMDs, or Yeezys. That was it for me. That was my entire year. And I've had this request a few times in the comments. Uh, so I decided to move forward with it. Guys, we are gonna do a year in review of 2016 of my sneaker collection and all the purchases that I made over the last year. Hop up in that backseat out at four and don't nobody try some things and call me your opponent. Got a bunch of commas then I roll up with the Rolex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunting some of bad, texting with the bill. Roses in my wallet and I'm flexing it for real. Racks and racks and racks, I look like rookie of the year. Fronting with the cash, it's getting moody over here. What I want to do is run down some of my favorite shoes, some of my least favorite shoes, some of the overrated and underrated, and give you guys some suggestions on what I think is essential for anybody's closet. So over the course of the year, I think we ended up purchasing around 28 different pairs of Adidas shoes. That's a lot. And maybe too much, but to each their own, I enjoy it. I enjoy the collection part. I enjoy unboxing them on YouTube, so well worth it for me. So I think the best place to start this is where we actually began at the beginning of the year. I will never forget it. Jenna and I walked into the Adidas store and I saw these sitting on the shelf and I had to have them. Now, prior to that, I really didn't know anything about the Ultra Boost, and this is the first pair that I ever purchased. After I bought this pair, it was like a chain reaction, and I just had to have them all. Now that you guys know the start, I wanna give you guys an end of the year top three picks of Ultra Boost, in my opinion. Coming in at a strong number three, it honestly hurts me not to say this is my favorite pair, but I just I just can't say that it is. But this is the multicolor ultra boost uh just the texture and the attention to detail and everything about this shoe i just absolutely love i'm trying to think but no i i definitely know number two now i'm ashamed that they've gotten as dirty as they have guys but i'm sure a lot of you don't even know what this ultra boost is a lot of you probably do but some of you guys definitely don't this is a pretty rare pair in my opinion and you can tell by the price tag that they're going for for resale now this is the tea time ultra boost and by far one of my favorite colorways. You know, it's got like the classic accent of black and white and it's just done so well. But when I bought these, I think they were going for $300 for resale. I went on the app where I buy all of my sneakers for resale and this is going from anywhere between like $600 to a thousand depending on the size. So really, really good markup on this. The tea time, number two for me. I love this shoe so much. My favorite pair, my number one absolute favorite Ultra Boost is actually the shoe that I have on right now. You probably saw them a little bit at the beginning. This is part of the Olympic pack. These are the silver metal ultra boosts. And when you really think about it, they are very unique compared to every pair. They have this shiny material right above the boost sole. And then you just have like this incredible variation of like gray and silver and chrome coming all the way down the shoe. But I feel like I can wear this with any single outfit that I have and pull something together and just always look good. I wear these to the gym. I wear these to the store. I wear these absolutely everywhere. So I have to say that this is my favorite pair in my entire collection. That is my top three of the Adidas Ultra Boost of 2016. In my opinion, it's all subjective. You guys are entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to mine. This is, this is it for me, the silver pack. I was trying to find where to put the shoe and then I realized that I was wearing them. Really quickly, I wanna share with you guys a couple pairs of shoes that I think some are overrated and then some are underrated. Here we go, let the roasting begin. 
This is a shoe that is highly coveted, but in my opinion, is a little overrated. This is the Vintage White Prime Knit NMDs. And I'll tell you what, you know what? As I look at the shoe, I feel like I need to wear these more. Uh, this was sort of like an impulse purchase, but I'm looking at my little monitor to see what the camera uh, sees, and I feel like I'm falling in love with them again. <laughs> I, I like these again. Oh my God, I, I'm crazy, dude. Now this is a pair that I, I just can't wear these. And this is one of the most expensive pairs of shoes that I have besides the Yeezys. For resale right now, guys, this is like the OG Prime Knit NMD, like one of the originals. And I gotta get like a lint roller and, and clean these shoes up. You're probably wondering, why don't I have laces in them? The default laces that these came with were so long and big and goofy, I had to take them out because the shoes just looked so whack with the laces that they had in. I need to go and like buy a pair of laces online that are shorter and so I can actually wear these. When I bought these shoes, I think they're going for around like three, $400 and now they're worth, uh, I have a size 10 and I was on the app that I use for all resale like I told you guys earlier, it's called Goat. These are selling certain pairs, certain sizes are selling for above like a thousand dollars, but I just don't wear them at all. Um, ah, I don't know, there's something about the NMDs that like it's really hit or miss for me. When I see a pair of NMDs, you'll see a couple more in my collection. I'm either like, wow, that looks great. Like that colorway and that design is fantastic or I'll be like, uh, man, that's kind of gross. Uh, so for me, NMDs hit or miss. These were hit at first, sort of a miss for me now. I should probably wear them more. I, I, I need to, I don't know. All right. The first underrated pair, guys. This is the Prime Knit Glitch. I think it's RK1 NMDs. I don't know if it's how the white and the black complement the red on the back and, and even like the tongue here with the Adidas logo on the front. Compared to other NMDs and the prices, you can get this for around like $185. This is a great shoe to start with. I love the Glitch Prime Knit NMDs. These are one of my favorites. I'm not even kidding. They're not the rarest. They're not the hardest to find, but I love them to death. So underrated. Next up, we have arguably one of my favorite pairs of shoes that I own. I think because when you walk into a sneaker store anywhere in the world, you're not gonna find a pair of shoes like this. This is the Human Race NMD. Uh, this was a collaboration between Pharrell Williams and Adidas. Now I think in total there's like six or seven different colorways. You can get this in black and orange and blue and green and red. This is what the orange looks like, but I, I think this shoe is incredibly underrated. They look so dope. It, it, again, a very straight edges on the side, very dynamic. I love the human race collaboration between Pharrell and Adidas. Underrated, incredibly underrated. Okay, so we went over like the basics, the Ultra Boost and the NMDs, and now we're probably gonna get to something that you guys have all been waiting for. What do I think about Yeezys? Because obviously when you look at the front of my collection, uh, it's a pretty big part of it. I've been completely addicted to Yeezys. Now I've paid attention in the past to what Kanye has done with other sneaker manufacturers like Nike and Louis Vuitton. I don't own any any of those. So like the Red Octobers that you can buy for like five or $10,000 resale or the Louis Vuitton collaboration. I think that was like the original shoe that Kanye made. I don't have those. I exclusively started uh, with the 350 Boost, the original, the Don Juan Diegler, the Turtle Doves. Now before anybody says it in the comments, any sneakerheads, I am ashamed with how dirty I allowed these shoes to get. I didn't realize at the time like how valuable and how rare these would end up being, but the Turtle Doves are by far one of my favorite pairs and they set everything into motion for me with the Yeezys, much like that original pair of Ultra Boost that I showed you guys earlier. In terms of Yeezys, I also have the Oxford Tans. And then of course I have the classic Pirate Blacks. I waited a long time to pick these shoes up, but when I finally pulled the trigger, I never looked back. I love this. This pair of shoes so much. Uh, you can really wear this with almost anything and they just look dope. This is the way to rock the Yeezys in my opinion. This is what looks the best. When you have the laces loose and the end just out here a little bit, best way to wear them. Now next up, we are gonna talk about the V2 350 boost that you guys have seen being released over the last couple months. The red, salmon, pinkish color, the copper and the green all got released the same day. 
And let me tell you this, this was just an impulse hype beast purchase and I was only getting them to fulfill the collection of the 350 boost. But honestly, as they've sat in my living room and I walk by them every single day and look at them, I've really grown pretty fond of these pairs. I, I really wasn't a big fan at first. I don't have the Oreos or the, the black and white and I also don't have the green. I probably should pick them up soon, but there's so many pairs circulating that for resale compared to what I paid in the past for Yeezys, it's really not that bad. So I can wait as long as I want, I think. Last but not least, when it comes to the 350 guys, we are gonna talk about my favorite pair. Right now, I'm actually doing a giveaway of the 350 V2 Beluga Boost on my Instagram. There's a link in the description below. It's gonna be ending soon. I'm giving away two pairs. Even if they're not your size, you can resell them and make a pretty penny off of them. But this is by far my favorite pair of Yeezys that I own. I don't know what it is. I think it's like the material and then the aesthetic and just how good great this looks on your feet and just sitting in your closet. You just feel like you've accomplished something when you own these shoes. That might sound a little weird to some of you guys, but I love this pair so much. I have to stop myself from wearing these because I would wear them every day and not show any love to any other shoe in my collection. The Belugas are, are by far my favorite. With that being said, my top three is probably gonna be the Belugas, the Turtle Doves, and then the Pirate Blacks, the original sitting right behind me. Last but not least for the Yeezys, I I picked up a pair of the 750s, the Grey Gum. There was a lot of hype when these were first being released. Now stick with me on this one because it's gonna sound maybe a little far-fetched to some of you, but I know a few of you are thinking exactly like me and you're gonna know exactly what I mean when I say this. I love this shoe so much, but I don't wear them because I'm only 5'10". For me, when it comes to streetwear and fashion, I feel like the only people that can pull off wearing high tops are people like over six foot who have long torsos and really long legs. I have long legs and more of like a stout torso. So I feel like whenever I wear these, I just look weird. I don't know what it is. That's why I didn't buy Jordans when I was younger. That's why I don't buy them now. I, I just feel like it looks goofy when I have them on my feet. Now, for some of you guys, you're probably thinking I'm an idiot and I'm thinking way too much. Rock on, wear all the high tops you want. I'm sure they look great, but for me, I just, I've worn these once. So I feel like people that are tall, you guys have the gift, you have height. I know for damn sure that you don't sit on an airplane that comfortably though, so score one for us. But I am 5'10", I don't consider that tall, but I also don't consider it that short, I'm like right in the middle. That pretty much does it though for my favorites when it comes to the Ultra Boost, when it comes to the NMDs, and when it comes to the Yeezys. Now, obviously, as you guys can see, I have a few different pairs. I guess I'll quickly show you guys every single pair, just really briefly. The default gray Ultra Boost, one of the first pairs I bought. The olive green Ultra Boost, great with the olive jacket that I have, works together really well. We have the gold Olympic Pack Ultra Boost right here. And then we have the uncaged reflective Ultra Boost. I still have yet to wear these outside. The original triple white Ultra Boost, uh, I don't wear these enough, but I do like them a lot. They're a little dirty. I, I gotta figure out a way to clean them so that they're really pearly white. You guys saw me unbox these a couple days ago. These are the reigning champ collaboration with Adidas Ultra Boost. This is a good pair. I've worn them to the gym a few times here or there. Right here, we have the Cage Reflective Ultra Boost. Next, we have the White Mountain NMDs. Still have yet to wear these outside either. Then we have the Lush Red NMDs, which uh, it's one of those things with NMDs that are hit or miss for me. Not as big a fan as I thought I was when I purchased them, so I don't really wear them that much. Got the red colorway for the human race NMDs. Love, 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 love. And then you've got the orange colorway for the human race. Love, 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 love. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for the 2016 Nate Shop Matthew Haig sneaker collection. Briefly, I wanna say thank you to everybody that's been hanging out with me for this entire year because we've done a lot of sneaker unboxings. And in general, my content has changed quite a bit. And the sneaker integration was something that I wasn't sure if you guys were gonna enjoy. I really really like it and I feel like if I'm interested in something and I'm motivated to talk about it, I feel like there's gonna be a decent number of you guys that are gonna enjoy the same things as I do. And it's gone pretty well for me so far. I know a lot of you guys hate the sneakers in the videos. I know some of you guys like them, but thank you to everybody that's been sticking it out with me. This has been a really fun hobby for me and I've really enjoyed sharing it with you guys and having your guys' opinion at the bottom. So with that being said, I want you guys in the comments right now to list your favorite pair of shoes that I showed you guys in this video. Your favorite pair from 2016 in my entire collection. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day in YouTube. We'll see you folks later. Goodbye.